My friends, we have a lot to cover today. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Emily. This is not a running channel, but I just ran the marathon and I have a few tips to give you today. Just before we start, I want to get this clear. I do not want to force anyone to run a marathon or encourage anyone to run a marathon with this video. I'm repeating myself, but running a marathon is not a healthy thing and I'm a healthy lifestyle channel and it's kind of annoying sort of to promote something that is not healthy. However, I am making this video because it would be rude for me not to make it. I have a few tips to share with you and I definitely think that they're worth sharing, especially if you're like signed up for the marathon already. I prefer give you the tips than leave you in the dark. So yeah, to choose, I'd rather share the tips with you and that's what I'm gonna do today. Also, this is how I trained for the marathon and I'm not gonna give you tips on the race itself because for one, I don't think that I'm such a good runner to give you tips. I mean, I did finish my marathon and I didn't finish it in the time that I wanted. So I'm not sure that I'm like the appropriate person to give you tips on how to run the marathon. Plus, I think it's a very personal experience and when you'll do it, <laughs> you won't even think about the tips that I'll, I would give you today. I remember I like searched for videos when I knew that I enrolled in marathon, like looked up how to run a marathon and all, and like I gathered a lot of tips and I just realized that I forgot about everything during the race. I did not think about the videos at all. <laughs> so um, no, I'm not gonna give you tips on the race, but I'm definitely, I think I've like, come down to a few like really cool things that worked for the preparation. Yeah, I did not get any soreness, like very few soreness after the race and during the training it went well. So I think I can help you on that. This video will be sectioned in four categories. The first one will be the training part. The second one, the nutrition part. The third one will be everything for recovery, prevention of injuries and how to deal with injuries. And then the last part is like everything else that I can give you, but it doesn't fit into the other parts. <laughs> so it's more like running specific tips that I can give you for the training. Yeah, I think it's gonna be another very long video. So I'll try to chapter the video, put the different section in the description box so you can find your answer right away. However, I would really suggest you watch the whole video if you're curious about marathon training or even like another race, even a half marathon, those tips could help you all right so part one the training so for me it was very important to one be prepared to run 42 kilometers which is a lot starting from zero <laughs> i mean almost zero i mentioned in another video that i was running like three or four times a year as in like oh i feel like going for a run today and i would go for like a 5k run so i pretty much started from zero eight to ten kilometer was already a long run hell 42 <laughs> so yeah for me it was very important to prepare my body for this much distance so that was the first point i wanted to finish the race for sure um the second point was that i wanted to keep and remain well injury free that's one thing which i didn't and i explained to you that later but i wanted to stay flexible because because of my kind of second job <laughs> which is teaching yoga and also just practice yoga for myself i wanted to keep flexible so that was another very important point for me and i mean being flexible is healthy for the body too which is why my training was three things it was the running obviously it was cross training which okay i'll explain to you after this third point which is the flexibility which basically for me was a lot of yoga and a lot of mobility in my workouts the second part cross training if you don't know is like when you're training for something for i was training for the marathon which is running cross training would be any other activities that would help me for the run so you can work out your legs that will help you to get stronger legs for example 
So I won't go into details of the running part because I've done a blog post about it. I have chose to run with the Nike training app and it's got a plan that you can do for the marathon. So the running part, I was not in responsibility for it. Everything detailed, what I thought about the app, everything, everything, everything. If you're really interested into the running part, go check out my blog. I can tell you though, I did 38, sorry, I planned 38 runs and I eventually just did 32 because of injuries. So it was planned 350 kilometers without the race and I think I ran 300 of preparation. It's not that much in three months, by the way, 13 weeks. I ran three times a week. That's the only thing that I could fit into my week. My week was pretty busy already. Another thing that you'll see on the blog post, but I thought it'd be very relevant to mention on here, the training plan gradually increased the kilometer per week. I did not start with like 30 kilometer per week and it included interval trainings too. I missed a lot of them because I was injured and they were pushed at the end of the training and a lot of recovery runs too. So that's for the running part. Uh, if you're new to running and you want to do a marathon, I think you can look. I did. You can build up your endurance and your cardio pretty fast, but go at your own pace. So for me, cross training was workouts. At home, I did not have a gym at all. I have a kettlebell, I think eight kilos, and then I have a few other weights and that's enough for me. I did three additional workouts per week. One was focused on the lower body. The other one was focused on the upper body. And the third one was a shorter one that was more of a core and cardio one, like a 20 minute thing. I did not start the workout until week five, I think, because adding three runs a week was already quite a lot in my training, I mean, my, in my week, and it was new to me to go for a run. So at first it was kind of overwhelming to have those three runs and then it became a habit. And then I started to incorporate uh, workouts around week five. And I thought it was very important to incorporate them because it would help me even prevent injuries, but also get stronger. And another very important part is I did not want to lose my butt. <laughs> uh, cardio. <laughs> Cardio is not good for your butt, <laughs> especially long distance running. So <laughs> I made sure that I had enough squats and things like that. The workout consisted of around 40 to 45 minutes of resistance training, additionally to a little bit of cardio, like Tabata hit like an eight minute out of it. I just spelled them myself. I made sure that they included stuff that it would be beneficial for the yoga as well so my training is more like a it's a resistance yeah it's a functional training with resistance training but also making sure that i keep my muscle lean so it's a lot of flexibility but strength in the flexibility as well i also got my psoas torn for the training before the running I got my psoas torn, so I had to make sure to also add a few moves for it. If you're really interested in like the moves and the workouts, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do for you. In regards to the flexibility, it will be a total separate video and we'll see if I gain, lost or remain the same in terms of flexibility and that's going to be coming next week on my channel, I believe. <laughs> It's so hot in here. <laughs> Woo, summer's coming. Okay, moving on to part two, which is the nutrition part. It's probably my favorite part. If you don't know, if you're new here, um, I'm vegan. Hey, I'm vegan. <laughs> I'm vegan, so that means I don't eat any animal protein. No meat, no fish, which is also meat, haha. <laughs> no dairy, no eggs. Okay, so I'm vegan. That's something that hasn't changed during my training. And I eat, I would say relatively healthy. I mean, I eat healthy. Yeah, I eat healthy. I eat actually quite healthy, very healthy. <laughs> What am I saying? I eat healthy, balanced diet. I never restrict on anything. However, I just naturally tend to love more health food. During the training, so during three months, I did not change 
my diet, I would say I was a little bit more concerned about my diet. Concerned in the way like I was a bit more careful about what I was eating. Not necessarily about eating very very healthy but more about the digestion thing because actually I found myself always on the go like if I wasn't doing yoga or teaching yoga I was running and like I just needed to be good with my digestion so I did not like to feel bloated at all so everything that made me bloated even if that's a healthy thing like for me capsicums pepper make me bloated onions I'm intolerant to which are healthy food but I'm intolerant to them so I cut them out but also things that I used to eat and weren't really healthy <laughs> I'm trying to give you an example. Before the training, I would take lattes a lot. Matcha latte, huge tall matcha latte and that crap, <laughs> sorry, I cut it out almost completely. Yeah, it just didn't make me feel light and I needed to feel light and it didn't fuel me at all either. I needed really nutritious food so my focus was more on nutrition, on like food that are really nutritious and that are gonna help me to train better and to recover better. I definitely ate chocolate, desserts, everything that I wanted when I wanted but honestly as time went by and I ate healthier and healthier I just didn't crave that much those things. I was also extra careful on protein actually I upped my protein a bit because when you run long distance when the glycogen stores are empty your body starts to get into the fat um, and then it gets into the protein kind of at the same time and you lose muscle so I wanted to up my protein for that I ate a bit more tofu and soy based things but mostly I added some protein powder in my diet that really really helped me it was very easy for me because I would add it let's say to my oatmeal in the morning so just a scoop of protein powder or in my smoothies sometimes just with water I know it sounds gross so I've been using this Welco protein powder this was sent to me by the brand but I've been using their green powder for so long now and I've loved it and I actually purchased one of the protein powder and I loved it so much and then they sent me the protein powder so I was stoked <laughs> by the way they did give me a discount for you but it's only available till the end of April so if you want to try their product which I absolutely recommend they're kind of pricey but honestly taste amazing and the ingredients are amazing I highly highly recommend side note that's one thing I upped my protein a little one thing that really really helped me keep on track with my eating habits and nutrition and not like spend so much money so much money yeah money and time cooking was meal prepping it's something that I totally let out of my life month and months ago I was kind of cooking each time each meal I figured I had way less time <laughs> and I needed to start meal prepping so I would be sure of what I was eating and not like snacking here and there. So I started to meal prep and that changed so much my life. <laughs> So I wasn't really really strict but let's say I would do like a list during the week of the things that I felt like eating and then I would list like how many portions I would make out of them and then I would sort of try to see like which day I would eat that and that compared to like if I was out like teaching and coming back late. I wasn't like very worried if I was eating something else than on my list. In a week I would try to include things like cooked carbs so like rice or pasta, quinoa, something like that. I would also have a big thing of greens, pre-cooked greens, saved so much time. What did I have? Roasted vegetables and then a curry or like a soup or things like that and then sometimes like a sauce or hummus. That would be like my main things for the week and then I would add on bread and sometimes avocado or like a big salad. Oh and finally I ate a lot <laughs> I ate a lot of lentils and chickpeas lentils were my life <laughs> during this three months and yeah they're they're amazing food Mia prepping by the way also helped me to save money I guess I was around 50 or 60 euros per week everything almost organic and in Paris I think that's a 
pretty good score. Again, I wasn't buying fancy fancy things, sometimes here and there, but not that often. You know, very simple food. The few things that I did, however, tweak and that I can tell you is around three weeks before the race, I completely cut out processed sugars, alcohol. Not that I drink a lot, like I barely ever drink anyways, but I cut out alcohol because I knew that if I needed to recover, plus I was injured at that time, so I needed my body to recover and alcohol is just a poison, it's toxic, so I didn't really need that in my body. So that was one thing I did. And then prior to all my long runs, I would have a shot of beetroot juice. I've already talked about this in the last video, but beetroot is pretty cool when it comes to cardio and endurance. During the last week before the race, I did not change anything until the Thursday. I started to eat a little bit more carbohydrate in dinner time. However, I got sick on Thursday too, so my appetite dropped. So that wasn't... it was kind of annoying. But I upped my carbohydrate than what I would usually eat. Nothing crazy. I, I never like had a full plate of pasta, things like that. I kept the fiber because I'm used to it. I kept the fruits, the vegetables. I was in a group and people were recommending things to do before the race and tons of people were like, cut out the fiber one week before. What? 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 Do you want to run with constipation? Do you want to run with like kilos of food in your belly? No. For me, I kept everything normal. Really cut out all the processed food. I didn't eat a lot of processed food, but the small amount that I was eating, I cut it out during the last week. I also did not go out to the restaurant because I was very scared of food poisoning because it's a thing and I really didn't want to mess up with things. So I ate very simply and normal food that I could digest. I know this video is getting really long and I hope uh, you're still here. <laughs> All right, one more thing concerning nutrition is during the race and even during my very, very long run of 30 kilometers during the training, I ate. Oh yeah, by the way, I never ate before running, that's me, but it's very important that you listen to your body. If you need to eat before runs, eat. But when you're going for more than 20 kilometer it's quite important that you eat a little bit before so yeah i was saying <laughs> sorry during my marathon i made my own gels i wouldn't really understand why i would get a very chemical stuff which is honestly just sugar they add like tons of chemicals in there you don't want to know I'd rather make my own gel for the race which I did and I've put the recipe on my blog so make sure if you want the recipe for it you check out my blog it'll be in the description box below one thing I can tell you though is this has been really good during yeah the race so basically it's not coconut powder it's coconut water in powder so it's coconut water dehydrated so it's got everything that the coconut water has without the water ha. what i did is i incorporated it into my gels because coconut water got tons of electrolytes that's what you lose during your runs but i also had very little pockets of it in my pocket when i was running and then when i grabbed the bottle on the way I put the powder in the bottle. I mean, my sister did it because she was there at that moment, but I just pour the powder in the bottle, shake it out and drink it. So I had like coconut water on the go. Yeah. All right, moving on to part three, which is recovery, rest, prevention, and dealing with injuries. So we've seen the training and we've seen the nutrition that are two very big important things and everyone is very concerned about that. And I mean, you can have the best training and you can have the best nutrition in the world. If you don't take time to rest and recover, it doesn't matter. You're gonna burn out and you're gonna increase your risk of injuries. It's just not worth it. So first point, rest. 
resting was very important in my training my three months I rested a lot more than what I used to before which is normal because I was a bit more tired too but I also needed um, to let my body recover from the runs which it wasn't used to and the additional workouts so yeah I rested so sleeping or just like resting at home like doing nothing it was hard but I said no to my friends not every time but a lot of time when they invited me out I said no because even if I could physically I mean I'm 25 years old like if I can't do that you know <laughs> even if I could physically do it I knew that it wasn't good for me even if I could on the moment do it I would like have to pay it later often I said no luckily I have very supportive friends that totally understand meditation was also very important in my life I added meditation around five to six times a week every morning for 15 to 20 minutes if you're interested in meditation maybe I can do a video on meditation how to meditate um, beginner tips so I had two injuries during the training one that occurred before which was a tear in the psoas in the muscle and then at the end I had a tendonitis bursitis on the Achilles tendon that was the second thing that I needed to heal in like two weeks before the marathon if you watched my video before you've seen that so my meditation usually focused on healing my injuries I know it sounds crazy <laughs> but I just kept thinking of sending positive vibes to my injuries yeah I don't know if it worked but my psoas is better my Achilles tendon got better at the end I mean I think it was worth it also in the meditation at the end when I was kind of stressed around the race I would do something that's called mental contrasting in my meditation which is oh by the way I need to tell you something else yeah mental contrasting is basically visualizing the event or something that you're stressing about and visualizing the problems and how you can solve them so that on the d-day you would have all the solution already so that's one thing the other thing i wanted to tell you is that during my meditation at the end i would also do hyperpressive abs it's like vacuuming stomach i know it's popular now but sorry i was there before <laughs> hyperpressive abs strengthen your core without crunches that's one thing i did too regarding prevention of injuries there are a few things that i did first of all i never ever 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 went for a run without warming up before i told myself before the training emily you're never going to run without a warm-up before because that's what i tend to do usually just like Shoes on, a far run. No, 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 no. I would take five to 10 minutes warming up. So kind of an active stretching and also mobility of the hips. Making sure my butt was activated because I wanna use my butt during my run. I tend to warm up less when I went for very long runs because I would warm up as I run, but I still would do moves before, very important. So that's warm up. Mobility is another thing. So mobility, you can be flexible, you can do that, but do you actually have strength in that posture or are you just like a lazy and just flexible person? you know be a healthy flexible person be mobile mobility i included already in my yoga practices in my yoga class so every day i would do something mobile for sure in my workouts i would also do mobility so mobility was a big part of prevention of injuries a third thing that i could tell you right now is do not stretch after you run i know i know i know it's common that you think you would stretch after a run but don't because your muscles are so warm that if you overstretch without thinking too much when you stretch you can overstretch and you can tear muscle moving on to recovery I know we're like touching very similar topics but resting is one thing prevention of injury is something else moving on to recovery so what did I do to recover from my runs of course nutrition super big part of it after long runs I would drink around a liter of water a big tall glass of coconut water and a tall glass of protein smoothie with my protein powder I also did take those greens from Welco I mean I keep like telling you about it but yeah it's just an awesome brand and this I would take whenever I didn't have green during my days so hydration for sure is a big part of 
recovery. Of course, resting is part of the recovery process. Um, foam rolling, so for me, foam rolling, ah, I love foam rolling, it feels so good. I foam roll on my quadriceps, my hamstring, and my calves a lot. I would really suggest you buy yourself a foam roller if you're going to prep for a marathon. Again, stretching, not after the race, but stretching in general. Last thing, cryotherapy. You've seen me going to cryotherapy. I went first for my hip when I was injured and I went a second time after the marathon to help just recover. After the marathon, I did not feel very sore in my muscle. I did have one day where my knees and my feet were in pain, but other than that, my body recovered pretty good. I was extremely tired for a week, but I'm not sure if it was a marathon or the fact that I was sick before the marathon. And since I ran the marathon on top of that, my body was like, what the f are you doing to me? Oh, by the way, I had, <laughs> A really cool massage offered by my sister before the marathon so that was really cool too all right so notice that I'm not talking about how I solved my injuries because I don't want you to think that you have the same injury as me if you do have the same symptom as me I know it's so easy to turn yourself to Google or your favorite blogger when it comes to your health and what disease you have <laughs> and that's the worst least thing that I want you to do please see a doctor first see your physiotherapist but for anything we are entering the fourth part of this video I still have a few last tips to tell you about prepping for the marathon that I could not fit in other categories so here they are so the first tip is the support from your friends and your family I hope you do have good friends sorry you can't have my friends which are amazing but hopefully you have good friends too if you have good friends that will support you or even run with you I was the only one crazy person in my friend group that decided to run the marathon but all my friends were so supportive and amazing and I love them so much and yeah you have a run today right uh, good luck for it the weather's not so bad today like it's not raining at least for now, so maybe it's a good day to go. Voiture, euh, on pense à toi. On, je voulais savoir euh, comment tu te sentais à J-2. On est au taquet, on sera tous là. Whitney, Nathalie, Tatiana, Tatiana. <rire> They were like checking up on me and sometimes I would be such a bad friend and I would never update them and like they would see the update to Instagram and they were like, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> I'm sorry. Please talk to your friends about doing the marathon. Even if you train by yourself and you think you're strong, trust me, the support from your friends makes a whole difference. If they can come during the race, uh, that's amazing. Although <laughs> my friends came and I was so excited. I was so excited to see them. My friends and sister, by the way, they were there during race day, but they saw me at the very worst time of my race. Okay, I have a confession. Confession time. There's a <laughs> 5k during the marathon that I absolutely don't remember. I know it sounds crazy to say this. I don't remember it. I, I obstructed it from my brain. I was in my world. I mean, the end of the race was just the worst and they were here and I know they were like, what the f I was almost crying. I was walking and running and crying at the same time and probably they thought that I didn't want to see them, but I was just like out. All right, the other things are more like run specific. Second tip is to dress appropriately when you go for a run, considering the temperature, I mean, and the weather. So my training occurred during January and April. It was cold at first and then it dropped even more and then it came like normal 10 degrees or something so I had like a very good variety so what I would wear when it was warm let's say first of all I wear very comfortable underwear I'm a legging girl I don't like the feeling of running in shorts except if I'm in like Tahiti or something like that I would run legging and a bra and a tank top if it's sunny then I put a hat on when it went a little bit colder to wear a tank top, I would swap that with a long sleeve t-shirt, like something that's breathable, made for running kind of thing. This is a very old one that I had like 
for years. If there was wind on that day, I would add like a very thin layer that I had on top. Uh, wind or rain, by the way, so that was like an extra thing. This was, by the way, my marathon outfit. And then when it get colder, even, I would wear like a second skin long sleeve thing that I would really make sure to tuck in well in my legging. And then on top of that, I would have my long sleeve t-shirt. And then I would also protect my ears and hands, gloves, very important under five degrees you want to wear gloves gloves are very very cheap like I think it was five euros and it made very good difference when it was extra extra cold I think it was under zero degrees and I still had to run in the dark <laughs> that was really hard but I have put this thing that's like usually used for the ski that I had and it was really good and then I was ready to get out and kick it <laughs> now, there's one last thing that I want to tell you about this is something that was recommended from my mom which is a bib belt guys this changed my life I mean eventually I didn't use it because it was so cold on my race day that I didn't change but let me show you the demo of this so let's say you're going for a run and you have your bib on your tops you can't remove your top without removing your bib it's just like it's just it's just not working with this little thing pin it on top you just wear it as a belt, it's super light, and you can just draw off your clothes as you run. How great! <laughs> Alright, I don't know if that's the third or the fourth tip, but I get bored when I run, so I made sure to have a really good playlist that would like pump me for the last 30 minutes of my long run, which would usually be an hour 30 or more. And then for the first part, I will listen to a podcast. That way I was like, I'm not losing my time and it keeps the mind occupied and busy and like focused on something. Even if sometimes I, I had to go back because I was lost in my mind. Podcasts are actually a really cool thing for long runs. Um, it's Long runs are not runs that you need to push yourself or have like a very upbeat music. Another tip that I can give you is when you run, don't hold your phone in your hand. You may not notice it, but it will add stress to your arm and your arm will fatigue eventually it will get tight and you'll get tight shoulder and you don't want to have sh tight shoulder when you run you already have tight legs <laughs> it's enough so put your phone in a pocket or use a watch or whatever you want to use but just don't hold your phone in your hand also if you're using like a tracking app for your run it will mess up if you use it in your hand because it will just not understand what you're doing because you're going back and forth like this before you go for a run for sure you warm up before but also make sure you lace your shoes properly you don't just lace them like this and go out make sure you also pull on this little tab that you have make sure it's well placed on your foot that it's not too tight either it should be tighter on the bottom of the foot than towards your ankle and that it's like even on each foot another very important tip choose well your shoes and if you can go see a specialist that can check your running motion my shoes were the asics road hawk ff2 i've had to cut them here for the race because of my injury which was a bursitis and when i showed my shoes to my physiotherapist he told me that it was basically because of the shoes that i got my tendonitis because they were a bit too hard here and they were a bit too high on the achilles tendon so I mean for me I would preferably have like flat shoe and fun fact I don't know if you know that guy his name is Mo Farah he's a very good marathon guy like runner he's a very famous runner and he's got Achilles problems and he cuts his shoe flat so at the end you just don't have this it doesn't mean that you have to do that for you like if you don't have those problems it's not that but make sure you have like very good shoe before the training starts it will avoid some injuries my final tip regarding the position in the running again I'm not a pro and I'm not here to tell you that it's the best but what I found is you don't want to run with slouched shoulder you don't want to run with your shoulder near your ears because that creates tension 
just loosen up. Um, it took me a while not to be tight in my shoulder anymore after a run, like at least three or four weeks, but in the end I could relax them down. One thing I was doing a lot during the first week was running very upright because um, I was always told it was better for the posture. It's true, I still believe it's better for the posture and it uses your abs more, but the issue is that you're not going as fast because you have like more resistance if that makes sense and if you can go like slightly forward it will just help to progress in the right direction <laughs> if that makes sense so eventually my running i think is upright but slightly leaning forward <sighs> Are you tired of me talking? Because I'm exhausted of myself. I am exhausted. I <laughs> hope that this video was helpful. This is like kind of a beginner's tip, kind of common sense tip. I said it's for beginners, but anyone can use those tips. If you have still any questions, please ask them in the comments below. You can send this video, of course, to your friends that's training for the marathon. And that would make me so happy if you can thumbs up this video and leave it in the comment below and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to check out my blog and other videos I did. I think I answered quite a few things. Follow me on Instagram. I posted a few tips there too and recipes. But yeah, that's uh, that's all. Thank God that's all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Mm-hmm.